Um, so I'm Richard. I'm from Darwin. Um, I don't know. I probably might be the only one from Darwin in this whole conference. 500 people, whatever. Um, and um, uh, had an interesting opportunity here where uh, Tim sort of mentioned about doing games and stuff, and I just sort of threw up this idea, and he said, "Oh, it might be good for this thing." So um, I'm. Uh, I'd sort of see myself as a bit of an advocate for APIs in games um, because uh, when I picked up Destiny back in uh, 2000, I think it was 14, 15, one of those years, um, I, was, I was really hooked on the game, obviously, but then um, when I discovered that there was APIs for the game, I was even more interested because it was like, not only could I play the game, but I could interact with the game in a way that I didn't even know sort of existed beforehand. Um, and since then, for the years, I've gotten really... Um, really uh, fond of APIs in, 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 in general, but also I really want to see them in other games. And at the moment, um, for instance, I am doing a lot of uh, community content for Battleborn, which is a game not many people might even know about. Um, and some of the fun aspects of that is that there are no APIs. And so in order to get a lot of the information I need for my content, I have to learn how to reverse engineer Unreal Engine data files, So, which is a lot of fun. So. Um, so this talk is, I've um, got three sections. So first I'm going to talk about Destiny and um, why I think API has actually made it a better game um, overall. And then I'm going to talk, um, we'll, we'll give you a couple of uh, things that I think you should consider if you ever want to um, incorporate APIs into your own games um, based upon what we've learned as a community as well as the developers at Bungie. Um, with making APIs for like third parties to use. And then third, which is going to be the biggest chunk of this talk, is going to be um, showing off some of the really cool projects that the community have created because these APIs exist. Um, so um, yeah, and another quick thing is I came on a four, four hour flight from Darwin. There was a couple of sick people. I'm feeling pretty good at the moment, but if I suddenly have a coffee fit, I'm sorry. All right. So, yes. So um, Destiny's been around for a little while now. Um, started off on four different platforms, and um, over the time it's been dropped, so they only do support new platforms. It's had four major content releases, and obviously 48 uh, major updates, or a good number of probably hot fixes, but a lot of those had substantial updates where they were constantly trying to improve the game, fix a lot of the issues that were wrong with the game at the start, which you might have heard in news and sort of stuff. Um, but those updates didn't happen overnight. It's, about 2.5 years now since then, and that's that sort of stuff takes time. And during that time, um, you don't, you, you know, those issues are still there. And um, one of the issues I'm particularly um, fond of is the item management. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, sorry, I'm a little bit sort of behind. So um, APIs really helped with this, I think, because um, while the, while the, the guys that actually manage the code, you know, they have to put the time in, as well as develop new content and all those other things that game developers have to deal with. Um, the APIs allow for the game to thrive in a way that um, would have, I think, in a lot of like, new games, if you had these sorts of issues, which I'll talk about, uh, those games would probably fail or they'd get a lot of criticism um, because those, like, say for instance, a user interface isn't working the way it's supposed to and that makes users unhappy, you know. Um, and um, yeah, and there are four particular types of API issues that I think I've seen used, and that's where you have static data. So if, say, for instance, um, definitions of items, uh, activity information, stuff that doesn't really change other than when there's new content being added to the system, um, and that's all stored in a manifest. Uh, we have our um, activity stats. That's the most common one whenever you hear about APIs of games, and that's where you know, you have like a PvP match and you pull out the stats of, you know, who killed who and who got whatever scores and that sort of stuff. And um, as well as player progression. And um, the, my, the one I really want to talk about is inventory management. So player progression is where, uh, say for instance, you have like an RPG sort of style game. You have um, uh, stuff that uh, represents your character, you know. So you have your, your character stats, you have um, goals they have in the game and stuff like that. That, that sort of information is stuff that users want to be able to access and look at all the time. And this is where having APIs is really handy for it. At launch, um, with, with inventory managers, the only way you could actually transfer items was to log into the game, log into a character, fly to the tower, drop your items, 
log out of the game, log into another character, fly to the tower to withdraw that item. That whole process took about five, five or so minutes, depending on how long it took. Because every time you go to the tower, you're actually matchmaking. So it'd have to spend a bit of time to make sure that there was a, an instance that you could go into to go to the tower. Um, and um, while you could actually um, see those items through their companion app, so another cool thing that Bungie did is that when the game came out, or actually this Firebacker thing is the open beta, is they had an app where you could actually inspect your character and you could see all their stats um, outside the game. So particularly with the, the beta where there was limited times you could be in the game, you could still sort of interact with it. Um, and this is back when there was sort of like this push in games for like a, a second screen experience with games. Um, but most of the like games, they sort of tried, but they didn't really do anything that was like other than like a, a separate game. Or something. Whereas um, Destiny had like an actual thing which added to the game um, through that companion app. And um, yeah. Um, the problem with uh, not being able to move those items is that users were very um, lazy and, you know, when, when you have to spend five minutes to move like one item that you particularly want for doing a raid or something, that's time that you're, you know, putting on your friends that, you know, they might have work and stuff because a lot of people playing Destiny are well, very addicted, probably extremely addicted, so uh, um, you didn't want to waste that time that you're taken away from like family or work and that sort of stuff. So um, the solution a lot of us had is that, you know, when you when you had like a Galahorn, which was at year one, I think the must must have weapon of the whole time, is you'd have three, one in each character, because any addicted person would have three characters. You wouldn't have one. Um, and the problem with that is that reduced the amount of space you had. Um, so like if you have a look on the um, next screen, so this is a, a, a screenshot of uh, like your inventory. So you can see you've got all these different slots, and if you see the, uh, like the semi-transparent, that's your other slots. You have your, your, your equip slot, and you have nine slots as well. So that's how much space you have on each character, and um, as well as you have like your consumables, you know, your other items. Um, this is actually probably from a slightly later version where they had a bit more space added, as well as the vault. So this is that thing that I was talking about where you have to deposit stuff from your character. So this is actually, I think, the version two of the vault. So the original day one vault was actually way smaller. So you had a lot less um, space to put items in and that. And when you got three of everything that you wanted, you know, three gull horns, three snipers, all that, you quickly ran out of space. And there was no way to sort of like um, manage that in a way that, um, and so people were like, you know, top requests on all the forums was give us more vault space, you know. Give, give us more items and all that sort of stuff. And some of the solutions that came up later on, was like for all the exotics, they made it so that once you had the exotic, it would be added to your collection. So you could delete it and then withdraw it any time you wanted. These are solutions they came up with later on, but they were not solutions that they could have like done within like uh, like the first week of the issue being made. Cause like, I, th I think in a lot of talks with the uh, developers is that they actively noted that there were issues that they had with the game, like that you know the game came out with problems, but they you know they needed the time to fix those problems, you know. Um, so then late 2014, there was this endpoint that came out in the API. It's called the transfer item. It required user authentication, and um, at the time there was no. OL support, so if you wanted to be able to use this endpoint as a third party developer, you had to steal Bungie's cookies. Um, which uh, um, I'm one of the people that also helped sort that out, um, at least with the PHP side of things. Um, it's not very a good, um, sorry, I'm having a really dry throat, so I just need a quick drink. Thinking about colds. So yeah, um, with cookies and the issues. So with uh, some of the solutions the community came up with is um, DIM, which is uh, one of the projects I'm going to talk about in a bit, is they developed the app as a Chrome extension because as a Chrome extension, you had access to cookies without having to require the user to log in. Um, but other solutions, particularly for those that wanted to do a mobile app, they had to get a bit more crafty. So like I think there was a way you could like meddle with the uh, in-app browser in order to be able to get access to the information or other ones where they just outright say, put your pass into these fields, then they submit it off. And you have to assume that they're going to do right by your username and password. So um, these are issues that obviously Bungie um, were not happy about. But the problem was is that 
having these sorts of apps to move items around was such a big change to the game that it was not something that they could just you know, shut down straight away. Um, so like this is, um, I think, I, I actually asked the guys that did this. This is, I think, version one of DIM. So Destiny Item Manager, I believe. I guess I sort of get that one mixed up because I've seen this seem to call it inventory manager because a lot of the, the, the apps they call them the same thing, item manager, inventory manager. But yeah, this is um, a early version that worked through Chrome. And as you can see there, you've got your, your three characters la laid out on the side. And I'm not actually certain, but you probably could even drag and drop. So you'd have this loaded up on your web browser. Your game's running on the screen and you're just moving items across while you're doing stuff, you know. Um, and it's all, all, all running. So it'd take... Uh, each, each request is throttled by a one second timer limit, so it takes one second to make each request, and you can't make two, two requests on the same endpoint within a second. And because of that interaction with the vault, it's, it has to go to the vault and then get put out to the character, uh, the minimum time to move an item from one character to another was two seconds. Um, and, but some of the developers have found ways around that with like multiple IPs and stuff in order to get it, make it look like their app moves stuff a lot faster. Um, and the cool thing was, is unlike the game where you had to, you know, do that going back and forth and stuff, is that you could schedule, you can say, okay, I want all these items which are like my raid gear set. I want to move them from this character to that character. Hit a button and you just continue playing, waiting in matchmaking, and it's all just popping down on the screen, you know, as you're playing, you know, which is actually quite a satisfying thing um, for players, you know, just to see all your stuff just sort of come down. Because it's the, the same UI when you get a reward from like doing a boss, so it's like you're suddenly getting rewarded all of a sudden, you know. Um, and yeah, and things like Galahorn, where it was a uh, necessity to have one in each character, suddenly you only need one because whenever you needed to do the other character in the raid, you just move the Galahorn across the other character. And um, yeah, and then I think I don't exactly know when, but I'd probably say it'd be mid mid uh, 2015 is when Bungie actually released their official um, item manager on their website, um, as well as an update to the uh, companion app, which allowed you to move items. Um, it was really cool um, and all that, but by that time, a lot of the third-party apps had come up with all these cool features and um, other things that they could do, and so a lot of the players still preferred those third-party apps because they had you know, stuck with them for a while. Um, sad thing is the user authentication actually didn't come out till literally, like, I think December, early December. So we've actually been, like this whole thing's been going on since all the way back when the game came out. And um, and yeah, and, uh, and sorry. And um, okay, so yeah, and it, it happened with a lot of feedback problems. So we have, on the forums, we have this, um, this group. So at the forums, they have like clans and stuff. But we actually have a group that's dedicated to um, discussion of the APIs. And initially, it was just created by one of the community members. But then over time, the actual web developers at Bungie started chiming in. And then they've gradually actually taken over it. And it's become like their actual uh, connection to the developers. you know. And they, they, they talk about updates when they're doing stuff. And I think when they opened up discussions about user authentication, I think mm, about October, probably a bit earlier than that because I think Rise of Iron took a bit of the time up. Um, they actually asked, so, so what do you want to see in the API? What do, what, what do you want to be able to access with this you know, authenticated access thing? And um, so everyone got their wish list on, you know, we want this, we want this, and this, and that. And um, yeah, and so now that it's there, there's now a safe way for users to be able to log into these, ga these apps without compromising their accounts. Um, I mean, I have heard of stories where people have actually had their accounts like compromised or deleted because an app was had malicious things or, or something like that. So, um, but yeah, it's all good now. So, um, and it's going in a, a good, good, good direction. So, and yeah, and the next step that the developers said with this is that um, they're going to start promoting these apps on their website. So there's actually a section on the website called the creation section. At the moment, it's more for videos and uh, images, but they wanted to ex expand that to also include apps so that you can they can actually show off all these really cool apps, um, which previously were mostly shown as, um, uh, they had these like 
community focus uh, news articles every so often, and they might talk, you know interview some of the developers and talk about the cool apps they've made and that sort of stuff. So um, here's just a quick example of. So I, I've written a, a document. Uh, it's like an interactive demo of the new authentication on my website, um, which I was helping with some of the developers transition over because obviously now that it's there, we want to get everyone on this so they're not you know stealing cookies and that anymore. So yeah, yeah. Um, you go through the authentication page. If you're not logged into your desired platform, you would have to log in. Then you get this approve page. You'd approve it. Um, this this next step would be obviously done in code, where you generate your tokens, um, and then you'd, you'd get your tokens with your expiration as well as a renewal token. And basically, um, with with this, you can keep um, authenticated access into the API, um, into the uh, private stuff um, indefinitely, if they think for up to a year, provided you refresh them at the right amount of time. Um, compared to uh, the dodginess of cookies, where um, you had, I think you had to detect the expiration, some other weird detection things, and um, in my little private experiments with it, I'd often like miss that that point where it signed me out and it sort of throw an error and sort of stuff, and not very very nice. So with um, the third party apps. Uh, there are a few that are open source, not all of them are open source, but um, they also are very open, like we're a very like open community, we like to talk to each other. In fact, I think we've got, uh, other than the, the forums, we've also got like a Slack which I think has got like 60, 60 something people on it right now, so from all these different different facets, like I think the most recent one actually joined, I think it's got Mozilla background, so some really interesting sort of uh, like skill sets popping in there. Um, uh, mostly to help with DIM because it's a DIM Slack, um, but also to, you know, so, so we've got this community, so if someone has a really good idea, they can sort of share how they did it with someone else so they can incorporate it into their project and that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, and, and the forums currently has what, over 2,000 members, I, uh, 2,500 members. I reckon a lot of them are just stalkers there trying to stalk like developers and stuff, but like I know there's a good good 30 or so people that are definitely developers at least. So. <laughs> Um, because I'm, I'm pretty active on the uh, forums, or at least I was um, prior to last year. Um, so yeah, this is a quick look. That's our forums. This is a, like a little home. Um, you know, uh, it's actually gotten a bit of a facelift lately. So it used to be a bit, bit more plain. Um, so the other thing with the, uh, the APIs is that the actual official authentic um, official documentation wasn't that great. Um, in fact, I think it was uh, mostly done as uh, uh, automated documentation, so uh, with maybe minor comments and stuff. Uh, so uh, this this happened before I sort of five minutes. Oh shit. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I created a, an unofficial documentation where I actually grabbed all the uh, the uh, uh, co uh, the, the 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 JavaScript files and actually reversed it into actual documentation. Um, which is in, um, put up on GitHub and that sort of stuff, and there's a bunch of different languages. Um, and it's a comparison of their documentation to the documentation that I've set up. And it's actually, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, even the developers sort of say, you know, use this documentation for looking up stuff. So, um, But I've discovered in their documentation they have some pretty cool little Easter eggs if you go and look through it. You know, like, I think there's even a It's Happening GIF in there somewhere. So. Um, so with your APIs, um, as I said before, there were four different things. Um, I might just sort of skip through this because I really want to get to these um, talks. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of apps that I wanted to talk about. DIM obviously being the main one, which is is uh, open source item manager. Um, they've got some a ton of contributors. Um, just a screenshot of that. Um, so that's currently running in Chrome, but they're also working on a, an actual web version now, which will run on, on mobile on that. They just have a few issues with their item stuff. Um, Destiny Tracker, which pulls tons and tons of stats. Um, the developers actually said once that it would take them, if they were doing it normally, like one IP in there, it'd take them seven years to get the sort of data that they've been getting. Um, so they're obviously doing some ways to get all that. But like the amount of data that they're passing on a daily basis, I think they have four million, four million, four million registered users and about eight million that are actually tracked um, into their system um, for all the stats. Um, uh, Star Commander, which is a mobile version of item managers, um, he, he, he sort of did something similar, um, as well as he's added some other 
features as well. Destiny Command, which is uh, a bot for making requests to the APIs. Um, it's an example there of some of the requests. Um, trial support, which is specifically for the uh, PvP component, a um, particular mode. Um, so you can actually check who you're actually going to fight and then compare to make sure that um, you, know, you weren't going up against like really strong dudes. Um, so a quick look there. Ishtar Collective, um, they pull the static definitions of all the lore and then present it in some really, like, I've had a look at recent, some really nice layouts of web, so you can actually read through all the lore, um, which was criticized as not being available in the game because there are these little cards on their website. And this particular dude I'm quite fond of, um, Chris, he makes these apps which do some very unique things with the APIs. So Guardian Theatre, for instance, it um, integrates it with uh, the Xbox share ability and recently with the Twitch APIs to actually figure out videos that have you in it from other people's recordings and then list it all out by using the APIs to cross-reference the times in it. And so you can see someone else shooting you, killing you in the head you know, through the APIs. <laughs> um, and this other really cool app, which is my favourite, is called Secret Scrubland. Um, it's a little GitHub project where it um, shows you a heat map of the time you spent playing the game by day by day. So <laughs> this is me. As you can see there, uh, last year I sort of fell back because I started working on a lot of Battleborn stuff. But it's a really cool sort of use of the APIs. Um, it's very slow and has issues. But it, once it loads up, it's like, oh, wow. It's a cool screenshot to share with someone. Um, some other little projects and that. But um, obviously, I run out of time. Um, and yeah, so as you can see, there's the APIs, the forums, um, as well as uh, a recent Node.js uh, implementation of the APIs are written by Des Robo. He's the guy that founded the forums. And if you want to talk to me more about this sort of stuff, um, I'm at Twitter, Lowlines. And yeah. Back on. Um, Richard, I just had a quick question in two parts. Um, yep. Was it a surprise when the Bungie developers started working with the community developers, and what was your reaction to that? Um, I don't know. It's been so long because it's like it, it sort, of, sort of becomes like this history sort of thing. Um, uh, I don't know. It sort of felt like you know you got this like friend that you know um, that sort of half talks to you, and then gradually over time they sort of talk to you more. And then it sort of becomes this like friendship. Like he's a, one of the developers actually even on the Slack with us now. So you know, not allowed to talk about anything Destiny 2 related, of course. But and what's the other part? Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, it was just I don't know. It, it, it's sort of hard because it's sort of like it, it, it's only two years, but this feels like for so so long for us because it's we've been at this for a while. So yeah, is that it? Oh, yeah. Anyone else have any questions? I actually don't have a question, I have a comment. I know I can't believe I'm oh, doing it, but it's my mini so. <laughs> <laughs> um, congrats on actually having better uh, documentation than the developers. Uh, that's actually a huge thing that I think people hugely it, underestimate. Important to note, it was only possible because their code, while it was um, also minified, it was so well written that I could write a regular expression to actually pull it. Um, if it wasn't written that well, it would have been absolute help. So that's testament to their code um, as well. Um, so, yeah. um, so I think uh, we've still got a couple of minutes. Are there any other questions or should we just give Richard his round of applause and we'll move on to Kasky. Um, have we got a new lectern mic? Yeah, it's a point of